In this video, I will break down the process of creating a Voronoi lattice structure that can be applied to various geometries. This can apply for shoe soles, bicycle seats, helmets, and more. In this video, we'll be using a bicycle helmet design. I have prepared a pre-modeled helmet for this tutorial. You can follow along with any product of your choice. The first step is to apply this self-fracture pattern on top of the sub-D object. We will start by referencing the sub-D object into Grasshopper. We will start by adding a sub-D container. Right-click and select Set 1 sub-D object, then choose the sub-D object. This will reference the sub-D geometry into this container. The first two nodes we're going to use are Voronoi 3D and Populate 3D. By default, when we populate geometry, it generates a set of points inside boxes. Instead of populating those points on this box, what we want is to populate them around the sub-D object. If we plug the sub-D into Populate, it will generate points around it. Now we can control the points by connecting a number slider to the count input. This will control the number of cells, which we can adjust as we go. Next, we take those points and plug them into the Voronoi component. Now, if we take a look at the areas where the Voronoi cells don't fully cover, those areas are the ones that intersect the box and the sub-D surface. For now, let's disconnect the Voronoi cells and we're going to expand our node setup here. We need to add some processes between the sub-D container and the populate 3D component. We're going to add a bounding box. Basically, this doesn't affect what is already done internally by the populate 3D component. Scaling the box will affect the coverage of the cells. We need two nodes for this, scale and volume. The bounding box will directly plug into scale and the centroid from volume will be used as the scaling center. We are going to replace the previous connection with a scaled version. Now we can input float values for our factor, which will help us control the scaling of the bounding box. This will scale the cells. And now we are going to reconnect the Voronoi cells to our points. Let's clean this up by selecting this node setup and pressing Ctrl G. We'll name it Bounding Box Scaling. Now we will apply this cell pattern on top of our sub-D object. We can't use Boolean operations directly on this sub-D, so we need a prep container that converts the sub-B to a poly surface. We will bring it to the front. Now, on this sub-D object, we will add the cell pattern. What we can do is find the solid intersection between these two sets of geometries. For this, we need the solid intersection component. We will directly connect the prep to the first input. For the second input, we need to graft it which means we are telling it to calculate the solid intersection between each Voronoi cell and the BREP. This gives us the patterns. Sometimes you may not get a perfect result. In that case, you can go ahead to Rhino Options, select Units, and set the tolerance value to a very small number, like 0 0.0001 or something similar. If we take a look at the bake result, we can see that the cells are not distributed evenly on the exterior surface. Next, we are going to add additional points that target the surface of the sub-D, so the cells will generate from those points as the center and give us with an evenly distributed cells. These two components, Voronoi and Solid Intersection, take about 99% of the computational time. We will go to speed optimization later, so for now, we can disable them. From these points, we add additional points that are exactly placed on the sub-D surface. This way, the cells will be evenly distributed on the surface. We use the populate geometry component. If we plug the sub-D directly into it, we won't get anything. This is because we can't populate directly on the sub-D. In between, we need to add a BREP container to get rid of this error. Now we can tweak the counts until we get enough points. These points will mix with the previous points we obtained earlier, so the Voronoi will account for those points. For this, we use the merge component. Additionally, these points will be used as the previous point input for the Populate 3D component, reducing the probability of getting duplicate points. Now we can replace the previous points with the new ones, and we can enable the two nodes here. This will reduce the smaller cells and distribute cells evenly on the surface. Later, we will weld some possible smaller segments. Now, we will go ahead and do some speed optimization. We can try by prevent points outside the BREP from passing through this wire. We'll use two nodes point in BREP, and call pattern. First, we'll test if each point is inside the BREP. The BREP will be connected to the BREP input, and the points will be connected to the point input. 
This will give us Boolean results indicating whether each point is inside the prep or not. We'll filter the points based on these Boolean patterns. The points will be connected to the list input, and the Booleans will serve as our patterns. By doing this, we successfully filter out the points inside the prep. Now, we can connect the filtered points to the Voronoi node. This will reduce the numbers of unnecessary Voronoi cells. To tidy up this, we can group these nodes and name them point filter. Although this method reduces computational time by half, it still takes around 53 seconds, which is relatively high. Another workaround is to use GH parallel in Python. This approach significantly cuts down the time by four times or more, depending on your available CPU cores. Next, our goal is to extract the wireframe and add thickness to it. We will work with two main components, rep edge and multipipe. By connecting the intersection result directly to the rep edge node, we can extract the edges of each Voronoi cell. Once we place those curve on same branch, we can then connect them to the multipipe component. We are encountering errors in this process. There could be several reasons. If some curves are duplicated, if there are invalid curves, Tolerance values may be causing issues. Let's address the first possible reason. We need to expand our node setup and filter out any duplicate curves. To achieve this, we can place Remove Duplicate Curve here. However, it requires lines instead of curves. We need to convert these curves into lines. We will use two components, Endpoint and Line. By using the start and endpoints of each curve, we can create lines and replace the previous connections with them. Now, we can observe some results, but the pipes appear to be too large. After some experimentation, I discover that a node size of 0.1 and a strut size of 1.0 find for this. We can observe some strange connections, which may be a result of very small segments. In order to address this issue, we need to weld these lines based on their proximity. Let's expand the node setup for welding the lines. First, we need to extract the control point of each line. We will group these control points by distance. For this, we need point group component. Connect the points directly to the point group component. However, since the control points are already placed in different groups or branches, we need to insert a flattened tree component between them. Set a very small distance threshold. If the distance between each point is less than this threshold, they will be placed in the same group. Next, we will find the average position of each group and replace the individual points with it. The number of duplicates should match the number of points in each group, which can be determined using a list length. Now, those new points will replace the previous points. For this, we will use the Replace Items component. The points will be placed into a list, and the new points will serve as replacements. Ensure to flatten the list. The index of each point will correspond to its respective index for replacement. Next, we need to place these points in the same branch as the control points. To achieve this, we will use the unflattened tree component. The replaced points will be connected to the tree input while the control points will be used as the guide tree input. This will give us two points in each branch, allowing us to create line connections between each group using the polyline component. Now we can flatten the lines and connect them back into the previous setup. However, we encounter the previous problem once again. Data conversion failed from curve to line. To resolve this, we can employ the previous trick, but this time we will move the component back to this step. By removing duplicate lines before grouping, we can address the conversion issue and reduce computational time. Once that is done, we can directly connect the polylines into the multipipe component. We can clean this up by grouping and naming it weld closet lines. Next, we will smooth this. We can directly adjust the node size and strut size for more control. However, to achieve even better control, we need to convert it to a mesh. For the smoothing process, we will use the Catmull Clark and Laplacian smoothing nodes, which are available in Weaverbird. If you don't have Weaverbird installed, here's how you can install it. Go to Package Manager by typing it in the command panel. Then search for Weaverbird and press Install. After installation, restart your Rhino. Now we can directly give the mesh to Catmull Clark with two levels of subdivision, which gives us enough resolution to work with. Next, we will pass this mesh to Laplacian Smoothing, 
which will provide us with beautifully smooth connections. We can control the smoothness by increasing the level. To visualize, we can use the custom preview component. We can see that the sub D edges from the original geometry are still present. The final step is to remove those connections while preserving these green hard edges. To start off, we need to extract the interior edges. Then, we will remove any lines that are close to these edges. For this task, we will use the sub D edges component, which gives us access to all the edges as one list. Our goal is to extract the interior edges. These edges come with an edge tag, which provides various properties for each sub D edge. We will use the member index component to determine the indices of the smooth interior edges. Then, with the help of the list item component, we can filter out the smooth interior edges. We can clean up and move on to the next process, which removes the lines that are closer to those edges. We previously extracted each solid intersection edge. Now we will find the midpoint of each curve and calculate the closest distance to the interior edge using the pull point component. Based on the distance, we can remove the curves using the call pattern component. For the patterns, we can determine them using the smaller than component. This will give us a Boolean result indicating points that are below this threshold. By inverting the pattern, we get invert selection. Finally, we can replace the previous edges with the updated selection. For the final result, I found the following sweet spot. Node size 0.2, strip size 1.5, and smoothing level 20. Here are the final results I achieved using the script. You can access the final script on my Patreon page to show support for future tutorials. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.